Thanks. I am very surprised that that made it here. Dear Clint, at long last I've managed to get my backside into gear. Made some effort about a little cigar box guitar video I've been discussing. Separate light coloured wood top, 290 by 195, no more than 2 millimetres thick. A 2 millimetre thick sheet with hand tools. Possibly book matched. Well, I can try. Your admiring pal and fan, Mark McClooney. Okay, Mark. Let's do it. So now that we've passed my attempt at comedy, we can go off with the video. Uh, I'm not sure if you know, but if you've been to Mark McLeany's channel before this, you'd see that he sent me up a little letter for an idea to make a guitar for our friend Stefan Pernline, uh, our friend on YouTube, who had his birthday around this time last year, so he knew that around this time this year, uh, we'd be able to make him a birthday present. And it was Mark's idea to make a guitar <clears throat> and he asked me if I would make the sort of resonating chamber or the box for him. So I went about finding a piece of Sapili with Mark's instructions because I didn't really know what I was doing. I uh, marked it all out and I got my frame saw and I cut as thin a piece as I dared with the frame saw without worrying about sort of cutting through the other side which is a possibility with my cutting technique you can see it's not great there. And what Mark wants is to have 5mm thickness uh, maximum for the sides and the bottom, which was a really big challenge for me, but I went for it anyway. So now I'm resawing some other pieces of the I used the Ryoba uh, Japanese saw here for this one, just because it's a thinner piece. So I didn't really need the frames of it. I mean, I could have used it, but I just preferred to use a thinner piece. And here, this is what spawned the idea for the planing stop. Uh, the fact that you saw me using screws in my bench, which is which was my regular practice before I got the planing stop. Putting screws in my bench to uh, plane really thin pieces of stock. And now I'm attempting to make dovetails and the ends of these really thin pieces. Uh, I thought I'd just do big dovetails because... Well, I was worried about breaking the wood if I went for really, you know, small, intricate ones. I went for more than one dovetail. I was really worried about breaking the wood. So, I just went for one big one. Sort of fit okay. There's a bit of gappy there at the top, but it wasn't too bad. Basically, I said to Mark, if I make any mistakes, then he can fix them. So I'm hoping he's fixed them. <laughs> I guess we'll see in his video. So I glued all the dovetails up, and then I simply just got the bottom flat and glued it to the other panel that I made earlier. Then he asked if I would try and make the top as well. See, the problem with this was, this had to be a kind of uh, a spruce or a fir, and this is all I had. Uh, and also, it had to be two millimetres thick at most. Now, I don't know if you tried to plane wood down to two millimetres thick with just hand tools, but it's not particularly easy. And this is another time when I could have definitely used a plane stop, but it would have to be a plane stop with a very thin stop on the edge, so I don't know how well that would work, but I'm still thinking about making one. 
because I'd like to be able to make some really thin stock, that'd be pretty cool. But for this one I did the same trick, the nails in the bench top, which is a bit of a horrible thing to look at from this angle because you're just waiting for the plane to hit it. But I tried to get those pieces as thin as I could and I don't know how well it worked. Uh, Mark wasn't able to use them for the final guitar, unfortunately. He had to get his own pieces. Now I'm chucking it in a box and sending it on its way to Mark. And if you want to see the rest of the build, then head over to Mark's channel and you can see him doing wonderful, amazing things with it. I'll put a link in the description. Thanks a lot for watching. Yes. Perfect. Mark. Mark. Catch.